back. Well, Mitch Stewart has a proven track record of identifying the youth vote, getting them out, and ensuring they vote for his candidate. He did it twice with President Barack Obama's campaigns. He's speaking to the first Broadbent Institute Summit this week. He joins me live. Welcome to the show. Thank you very much. Sorry, Sorry about be the here. weather, but, you know, <laughs> what can you do about that's it? That's right. That's right. Um, we have terrible youth apathy up here. Um, voter turnout's pathetic. How, how do you energize the base? How, how would you take this apathy and turn it into activism? So a, a, couple, a couple lessons that we learned from 2008 and from 2012. The first is relationships really matter. All too often, uh, young people feel like their vote is being taken for granted, and you don't have campaigns or candidates addressing specific student needs or young people needs. And so we made an intentional effort during the campaign to both organize on college campuses where young people, young professionals mm -hmm. hang out, but then make sure the staff that we had that represented our campaign fit that demographic. So we had young people talking to young people. Um, the second part of that uh, is, is the actual relationship building uh, that I that I referenced um, the intentional act of building a relationship with volunteers then allows those volunteers to have the skill set to build a relationship with the voter what we learned through a lot of analytics looking back at what was effective and what wasn't is having someone uh, that has a pre-existing relationship with that voter having a conversation with them asking them to pledge to vote actually increased their likelihood of participating by five uh, sometimes up to ten percent the key is getting youth talking to youth so That's you basically right. have to build a pyramid scheme out to uh, universities <laughs> colleges and wherever else right well i think it's having a large footprint making sure that both from an offline perspective so investing in field organizers mm -hmm. organizing is really important but also from an online perspective making sure that your digital footprint um, allows people on college campuses you know young people communicate through twitter facebook making sure that the campaign has a presence there so that you're both delivering messages but then you're also giving calls to action uh, through those digital means i'm always amazed here for example youth unemployment's a lot higher like double what the average unemployment rate here is you say get involved this is the only way to change the situation is to get out there and involved but they don't seem to Respond. Well, that, that message is incredibly important, and a big part of what we do in uh, building these relationships is is tell them about the theory of change. You know, this is where you are right now. We want you to get involved in this political campaign because if you do, this is what's going to be the result of that. And we did a lot of that work in 2008 and 2012 on behalf of the president. Initially, uh, the war in Iraq uh, in 2007 was a huge, huge, huge driver of youth turnout. Oh, so that's the sort of stuff like marijuana policy doesn't drive youth voters, or does it? Uh, I don't think it does actually. <laughs> yeah, because no, we got that issue. Issues coming out of the do? next okay. election. I mean, it's interesting. Uh, you're you're coming up here to talk to the Broadbent Institute. Oh, yeah. um, we've had uh, advisors come up and talk to the liberals as well. What's the attraction? Like, is it uh, what less are the lessons easily transferable to Canada that you're giving them? I, I do think that. The, the core fundamentals of building relationships, having friends talk to friends, neighbors talk to neighbors, is universal. And I think it is applicable in a Canadian perspective or from a Canadian perspective. Um, I think moving forward, though, some of the lessons that we have learned by really optimizing our digital outreach, making sure that uh, you know, you're using Twitter, that you're using Facebook, that you're using Tumblr, all the Instagram, all these different uh, new avenues from a digital perspective. Um, you know, I think we kind of led the edge there, but it's, it's catching up here. And it's, it's really been awesome talking to progressive leaders across Canada at the, at the Progress Summit that the Broad, Broadband Institute put on. Now, I know your company is involved with the Hillary Clinton startup slowly. It, will it be a dramatically different way of doing business and campaigning in, in 2016 than it is now? One way that I look at campaigns is it's an iterative process. Process, meaning that we learned a lot of lessons in 2008 that we applied to 2010, uh, which was a historically bad year for Democrats. <laughs> but we learned a lot of lessons in 2010 that we applied to 2012. And so what we want to make sure that we do in 2016 is not run the 2012 campaign, but run the next one. And so um, one thing that we're really looking forward to in 2014 is, is learning some new lessons so that we can apply that moving forward. And so I suspect what will happen is the relationship building, uh, having friends talk to friends, that's going to be universal and it's going to be fundamental probably for every campaign moving forward. But, you know, Twitter was one month old in 2008. Is that um, right? One yeah. month old. And so you're going to see uh, tons of innovations from a digital perspective that will have huge implications in 2016 that, you know, people are just thinking of right now in rooms or dorm rooms across across the globe, but, you know, across the United States. You'll just perfect one technology and everyone will say, that's, that's right. enough of that and move to the next that's one. Very exactly frustrating. Right. That's right. All right, Mr. Stewart, thanks for coming in. Good Thank luck you. with the conference this weekend. Pleasure. Thanks for coming in. Coming